Okay, what I'm going to show you today is how to boot up RetroPie in a quiet mode. So without all the text that appears at the start of the screen, without the extra information that sort of appears between you and playing the game to make it a, a quieter boot process. This sort of thing um, people are after when they've built the system, they've got exactly how they want it, and they just want to make it automatically boot into a game without it appearing to be part of a, like a, a computer behind it so the raspberry pi is hidden in so much that you don't see all of the startup text and other boxes that might appear to sort of show it's not a, a clean boot process so there's various things we'll run down a lot of them are detailed exactly in the documents in the um, online retropi docs section which are linked to um, and there's a couple of other bits that we can look at to make it as, as quiet as possible but i'll just run through what I've got. And you see here, what I'm using is a 3B plus, a Raspberry Pi 3B plus, and it's the stock image from RetroPie, so 4.7.1, but it's been updated. So I've run the update process. So it's now 4.7.21 and all the binaries and everything else are updated to, to be current as of, where are we, March, 2022. Um, so that's the sort of background of, of what I've got. Obviously, as with pretty much all of um, the videos that I'll do, I will say back up your SD card first. Make sure you've got a nice safe copy because this could, you know, you can always a chance that something could go wrong. So make sure you've got a, a backed up one. Um, and like I say, this this is the sort of thing you might want to do once you've got that final system exactly as you want it and you want that process to be cleaner, less um, text appearing. And what I'm going to do on this video is keep everything in this view. I'm not going to change the video capture to show a, a, a shell screen to um, zoom in on the text and um, so hopefully you'll still be able to read it it will mean that i'll have to type everything rather than copy and paste but that might be easier for everyone to follow it anyway right so first thing we'll reboot this like i say it's clean and store just got one rom on there and that's it i've not changed anything else and we'll see what i can capture um to show you what the the problem if you like is but bear in mind that the video capture might have a problem because when I restart the Pi, it lose the stream. So we'll see what's what. Okay, so we keep the record on. What I'm going to do is grab my controller and restart the system and we'll see what comes up by default. So I'm going to quit and I'm going to restart system. Am I sure? Yep, here we go. Okay, so I've got the text running down the screen. Uh, which should be captured now. Hopefully this all syncs with what I'm seeing and the audio at the same time. Retropy splash screen. Um, and then we should get the emulation station one in a second that will boot into the UI there with all our ROMs. Okay, so there we go, emulation station. And then it should just drop us into the area that we're used to. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna quit this. Um, yeah, hopefully it hasn't, done anything odd when I've restarted and just kept the record going but so we go um, right so I'm going to go quit and quit emulation station now you can do this remotely you know using putty or something to put these commands in but however you do it uh, this is the sort of thing that you want to check out so really quick yes so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the command line dot text so if I type sudo nano so i'm going to run the nano text editor with permissions that will enable me to write to the file and the file i want is in the directory boot so forward slash boot forward slash cmd um, i'm going to press tab uh, cmd line dot txt there we go enter that and there you go you've got uh, a line of text and that's all passing parameters to the pi as it boots to tell it what to do and there are technically two lines by the looks of it it's an empty line below it's really important when you edit this file don't put something on a separate line keep it all on this same single long line just add it to the end um, it's important that that isn't um, broken that format so do just add it on the existing line um, at the end there you just put add another space and what we're going to do is just add the word quiet which is kind of quite self-explanatory it limits all of the output that we saw earlier so i've added the word quiet and I'm going to save that with Control X. It says, do I want to save at the bottom? Yes. And press Enter. And I'm done. So that saved that change. Now, I'll restart and we should see the difference again. Hopefully the recording will work here. 
So if I type C, no, sudo and reboot, it will immediately reboot it. So let's see how that looks. I'll keep describing what I see, even if the video doesn't capture it. So I've just got a flashing cursor on its own there. No sort of stream of text running down the screen. Now I'm in the splash screen. So largely, that's eliminated a lot of um, boot up script, so that you don't see it. Bear in mind, a lot of the time when you're building a part, especially that boot up script can be really useful because it will debug um, what's going on if you get any problems. So it's useful. So this sort of process is best done when you're happy with your image and you, you want to get rid of it all. So I'd say that one was pretty clean, bar the flashing cursor. You might want to keep it, you might not. So the next thing we do is get rid of that cursor. So again, I'll just quit out of this, quit emulation station to get back to the command prompt. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, and I'm going to press the up arrow because it'll probably have yeah, remembered my session. Um, I'm going to edit the same file. So I'll go back to the same file, sudo nano boot command line dot txt. And again, I'm going to the end of that file because it's important you don't start a new file. And the next line I'm going to do is um, ba, 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 ba. it's adding a parameter. And I'll put a link to all these parameters that you can play about with as well. You can see the different options. Um, vt dot global underscore cursor. Uh, underscore default equals zero. So you basically type saying the cursor should be off with that equals zero. Control X that, um, save that with Y, press enter, and it saved it. And let's reboot again. Here we go. Next screen. There's no flashing cursor, there's no text running down, nothing showing there at all. Now I've got the RetroPie splash screen. Um, and then it will go to the emulation uh, station screen. So that's all pretty clean. Now the bit that I don't think is getting captured on the video is the rainbow splash screen at the very start of the process. Oh, and we also saw some text there. Um, if you pause and rewind, you'll see some text pop up there. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but next we're going get, to get rid of that rainbow splash screen. So again, grab my controller. Let's get back into command prompt area and we're going to take that splash screen out. So now it's a bit longer, sudo nano. So we're going to run the nano text editor with enough permissions to edit this file. And the file is in the boot folder and it's called config.txt. Press enter there. And uh, there's loads of rows in here, prefix with the hash key or pound key, or I'll call it hash because it's a hash. If we go down here, um, what we're going to do is add a new line. You can add it anywhere. It doesn't matter where you add it, as long as it's on a new line. Um, the, anything that processes this file will see a, a, a hash sign here and ignore it. That's all they're there for. So it's really useful to keep all your config in here. Just put a hash in front of it if you don't want it to be run. Or you know, A hash basically means it's just going to be ignored. But the line I'm going to put in, I don't want to be ignored, so I'm not going to put a hash at the start. And what I'm going to type is... I'll put a space just to make it look cleaner. There we go. Disable uh, underscore splash and then equals one. So I do want to disable it. And you can see Nano's kind of put it in white because it knows it's not going to be ignored. There's no hash at the front. So I'm going to control X that, save that with yes, hit enter. Done. Now I'm going to reboot. Now this probably won't look much different because I don't think it captures that rainbow splash screen anyway, but I'll see what it's doing. It's probably recording black about now. And uh, let's see whether the black changes here. And uh, okay, so now we've got a splash screen. So there was no flashing cursor. So that change took out the flashing cursor. I am hoping by the time I get to the end of this, my audio hasn't just completely cut out all the way through just because the Pi kept rebooting. But anyway, let's see how it goes. Um okay, so that was all cleaned there. Um the next point should be to take out, well actually, no, the next point what we're going to do is maybe you've got a clean system and you want to get it to be, not in here, you want to get away from any sort of user interface but straight into a game. So you can just turn your Pi on and it goes bang straight into the game without any interaction at all. So we'll do that change next. So if I quit out of this and 
go to the command line, quit emulation station. What we're going to do is edit the file that gets run on that boot up process. So I'm going to go sudo nano to get the text editor, and the file we're after is an apt retropy, uh, then configs and all, then it's and the file we want is autostart.sh, so autostart.sh, that's it. Okay, so hit enter here. And currently it's just got one line in which basically starts emulation station. Now we don't want to do that this time, we just say we want it to ignore that line and we can do that with the hash that we saw earlier. So if I put a hash there, then I know that that, that line isn't going to get run, but I want to put in a new line and that I do want to be run. So this is the ROM that I want. So at the start, I run the run command um, command. So forward slash apt. Um, this is the path where it lives. RetroPy. Then it's supplementary. Supplementary. Did I spell that right? Oh, didn't want to press that. Supplementary. Then it's forward slash run command run command and then forward slash run command dot sh then um, the parameters we're going to pass into that is, um, is that normal uh, maybe a bit of space there and it's green uh, zero there we go uh, and then a space and an underscore um, yeah that's right underscore sys so we're going to pass the system in there now the ROM I want to run is a mega drive one so you just put the name of the system in quotes. So I'm going to put Mega Drive like that. But you put whatever you want to run. Mega Drive. There we go. Then after that, we put another quotes. And in this set of quotes, we put the address or the path, including the file name of the ROM. So in my case, it is um, dollar $home. So this says it starts in your home directory. Um, forward slash RetroPy forward slash roms, forward slash mega drive, forward slash streets of, and this has to be exactly as the rom is named, this happens to be how mine is called, so I'm just writing out um, what it's called basically. So there we go, so everyone's um, path, unless you've got some sort of heavily modified system, will be home retropy roms, because that's your home directory, then it's the retropy folder, the roms folder, then whatever system you've got your ROM in, which is Mega Drive for me, and then the name of the ROM with spaces or just exactly as it is named on the file system. .md. Then at the end, what I'm going to add is, um, where's the ampersand, ampersand, and then I'm going to write emulation station, like that. And what that does is just to make sure that, actually, I think there's supposed to be a space there. Um, what that does, when you quit the game, it goes back to emulation station. If you don't put that in, when you quit the game, it would just go back to a command line. So you probably want it to go back to emulation station, not the command line. So that's why I've added that, that last bit. Ampersand, ampersand, space, emulation station. And that's it. So if I quit that, control X, do I want to save? Yes. And now let's try reboot, make sure I've got everything right there. So sudo reboot, here we go. Okay, the video's back. Uh, it's just a black screen at the minute because we've taken everything out. Here we go, RetroPy splash screen. RetroPy splash screen. Should transfer to the emulation station one in a sec. There we go. There's a bit of um, auto login text there that we'll have a look at in a minute. We'll get rid of that. Uh, there we go, straight into um, the ROM. So no emulation station, obviously, because that's the change we just made. So it's fired up the ROM. We've got a little run command splash screen up. Um, and we're here. So now if I quit out of this, it takes me back to emulation station or loads emulation station. And then you can just carry on as normal. Okay, so when we booted there, we saw a bit of boot up text and we saw the run command um, detail. So we'll carry on with that bit now. So the next bit, if I quit here and go back to command prompt, Okay, so 
in our home directory, which is where we are, PWD prints the working directory, so it reminds you where you are in home pi, and these are the files in there, and there's some hidden files as well in there. Is that A? I think. There you go, you've got a load of hidden files. Um, we're going to create a new hidden file, which, and because the new hidden file will exist, it means it hides a load of that boot up text. So um, to create a file, we use a command called touch, that'll just create an empty file essentially. And what we want to say is we want this in our home directory, which is that tilde sign. Just to, I mean, it's, I suppose you don't really need it because we're already in home directory, but let's put it anyway. So tilde sign forward slash dot. Uh, so the file name is dot hush h u s h login. And so there we go. Now, if I run what's in that directory, you can see um, somewhere in there is the hush login there in the middle, um, hush login. So because that exists, when we reboot, we'll get less text. And let's show that, sudo reboot. So you can see the difference, because uh, maybe some parts you don't want to do. So this is just rebooting. Now, OK, so we've got Retropy back up on the screen. We might still see a bit of text. Keep an eye open on the next screen. Don't think I've missed anything so far. Uh, there we go, a little bit of text. Um, IP address and some auto login, so we need to get rid of that as well. Um, and then we're back in here. So let's quit out of this as soon as it opens. Okay, back to, well, now it's going to load emulation station. Okay, right, uh, we quit to that. Okay, okay, next step. <clears throat> Right, the next one is a bit of a text. I wish I could copy and paste this. So, sudo, uh, if I type that right, s-u-d-o, nano, and remember, you can press tab when you're typing past to help auto-complete and speed things up a little bit. So it's etc forward slash system d, like that. Then it's getty, g-e-t-t-y, if I press tab, oh, there must be more, getty, uh, ampersand T T, sorry, Getty ampersand T T. Uh, y one dot service service. I don't know why my tab's not working. Uh, system. Oh, it's because I've typed it wrong. Delete, delete, delete. E T C system D. Then it's system. There we go. Then it's Getty and an ampersand tty one dot service dot d like that. Um, then the file name is auto login dot conf. There we go. That was easy. Right. So we're going to edit that file, the auto login file. Here we go. We've got three lines. Uh, exec start. Exec start again. Now I could probably. I don't think that's doing anything because it's blank. But I'm not going to touch it. So first thing I'm going to do, in case I want to put it back easily, is put a hash here because I want it to ignore that exec start line. And I'm going to put a new one in. Um, so I'm going to type exec start. And this one goes on a bit, I think. So exec start. Let's have a look. Just double check this. OK. Exec start equals. And then I'm going to put a hyphen and forward slash sbin forward slash a getty space hyphen hyphen skip hyphen login uh, space hyphen hyphen no clear oh spell it right there no clear space hyphen hyphen no issue space hyphen hyphen login hyphen options space quote hyphen f space pi close quotes space percent capital i space dollar sign uh, term that's it. Right. Okay. That should get rid of that um, 
boot up on the auto login. So control X that, save that. Now we're back here and um, we're going to stop that run command box we saw as well when the game loads. So we're going to get rid of that. So if we go into retropy hyphen setup and run sudo forward slash retropy setup, go into the normal retropy setup um, or UI to manage the config here. We're going to go to configuration tools and down the bottom here we've got one command here. So select run command, press enter, and the first option here, currently enabled. If I press enter, it says disabled, and that's what we want. So now um, we go to OK that. Oh, no, 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 we hit exit. And back, and exit again. And that's that bit. Right, so sudo reboot, and that should get rid of the boot up text showing anything on the video yet. Uh, the video should be black screen as well now. Uh, still black screen, totally black screen. Now I've got RetroPie splash screen. And this time we should see less or no text on the boot up um, between this and the game. And it's going to auto load to. Just watching it now. Oh, we've got one line, my IP address. We need to get rid of that. So that'll be the next and last thing I'm going to do on the video. So wait for the game, and you can see no run command popped up there as well, and we're straight into the game. So if we cut out of the game, and wait for emulation station to load. And we're going to quit out of it. Okay, last change, quit emulation station. We're going to get the IP details. So to change that, we are going to edit another file, sudo nano forward slash. And this file is an etc and it's called rc.local. rc.local. There we go. And you can see down here, it's got this bit that generates your IP address. So we're going to just tell it to ignore that. So I'm going to put a hash in front of this line, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to keep x x zero there. So we're just commenting out all the IP address details. Control X there, save that, yes, enter, and we're going to reboot. And this time you should see no text at all. We're going to go, to... here we go. It should go straight to the RetroPy splash screen with no extra text. There we go. Then we shouldn't see any text and it goes straight into the game. Shouldn't see that IP address anymore. There you go, black screen, and just thinking about loading the ROM. There we go, ROM's loaded. And you're in the game. So that's all you need to say, all you need to do is a few steps, but you can do it all in one and it'll take about five minutes. And you've got a clean boot up. And like I say, this is a 3B plus and the latest version of RetroPie. Um, I'll put some links with some extra details uh, that show other ways of doing this and other areas that you can check. Um, so do take a look at that. And as always, if there's any other guides or um, videos you want me to make about particular areas of RetroPie, stick it in the comments, please. You know, I do read them. Thanks for all the comments I've had so far. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.